Our first speaker will be talking about aromatherapy for peace and healing. We have Patty McCormick, the founder of Institute of Holistic Leadership. Welcome, Patty. Okay, great. Well, first of all, I do want to thank uh, Dorothy Lane Market for inviting me to be a part of this. I, um, you know, anytime that I can share some of the information about holistic health for self-care, you know, we say in education, you teach what you most need to learn. And that is so true because with what, you know, some of us have been going through with, with things in our life in general, sometimes we just don't take the time to take care of ourselves. I've been doing some work with a lot of healthcare providers on taking care of themselves. Um, and what I find is a lot of us don't even realize how the past year has affected us. And so what we want to do today is to talk about um, what can you begin to do? I mean, you know, I kind of laughed. Yes, I would love to have a three week vacation somewhere, but that's not going to happen. And so what I want to bring to you this morning is how to use some aromatherapy. I know I can tell by, uh, I've been watching on Facebook also, uh, we have some, some past students. I've got some current students. We're gonna be leaving here at 11 o'clock. We're gonna be starting a, our vitamins and supplement training virtually. That's been a big change for all of us in this process. So what's going to happen is I am going to talk to this morning about aromatherapy and how you can use it. And I tell you what, probably 90% of my personal healing is with aromatherapy. It makes such a difference in my life. And I wanna give you some, some quick, um, some, I was gonna say quick down and dirty, that's probably not the way, but some quick things that you can begin to do with aromatherapy to, and the other thing I like about aromatherapy is you can use it at all levels of life. As I said, sitting here this morning, um, I've never been on this side of a webinar. I've always been on the, the back end where we're, we're running the webinar. And so things look different on the screen and I found myself starting to get a little nervous. So I quickly grabbed my lavender and just started inhaling it to say, calm down so that I could, um, so be here and be present and be mindful when I'm doing this presentation. Um, I'm going to be talking about some specific oils and how you can use them. And we're just gonna move forward with that. So and I'm gonna be watching the time closely because you have a, a day that's packed with a lot of great speakers. And so I wanna make sure that I honor that time frame. Uh, there is someone I see, I'm going to, I think I can do this. Yeah, I'm gonna open my chat. Uh, I'm pretty used to watching it. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to chat them in. But I also know, uh, Dorothy Lane Mark has been wonderful in providing someone behind the scenes to kind of help with the chat. I'm going to leave a few minutes at the end for questions. But today, what we're going to talk about is aromatherapy for peace and self care. Um, it is, again, it's something that you can do quickly at any time and, and do it in a cost effective manner and do it quickly and easily and locally because the oils that I'm going to be talking about. And a lot of the products that I'm going to be showing you, Dorothy Lane actually carries. And so uh, you can run there and pick them up and uh, begin to change your life and bring peace and healing into your life immediately. So first thing that I want to touch on <clears throat> as um, I am a registered nurse, and I always say I never know if registered nurse, if RN stands for registered nurse or really neurotic. And I gladly claim the really neurotic because when I started teaching aromatherapy, one of my primary concerns was the purity of essential oils. Just a couple of things I want to let you know. Um, and I'm here to be an educator, so I'm not here as a salesperson. Um, but I am going to let you know that when I sit down to, it was the first program, uh, we, we own a holistic health training center here in Centerville. A lot of our classes are virtual now. And, you know, one of the things that I realized is this really was the first cert certification that we had that I needed a product. This, you know, and this is a stretch for me, guys, I'm telling you this, to teach aromatherapy and not have you be able to smell the essential oils, because usually we sent out so you can smell while I'm teaching. This is a bit of a stretch. I'm going to ask you to use your imagination, and we're going to be using some familiar oils and maybe some oils that are new to you when we move into that portion of the lecture. But for me, it was really important that I... Um, that I was able to, to have high quality oils. And why is that important? Did you know that 98% of the essential oils sold in the United States are not pure? They are cut with synthetics or they're diluted or they're cut with a different oil. 
for example, and the reasons are profits. Uh, so the companies can have greater profits. There is an amazing oil named um, Melissa. It's lemon balm. It's the herb lemon balm. It takes a lot of plant to get that oil. So a 10 mil, this size bottle of um, Melissa cost $113. And that's a lot of money. Um, you know, but you can probably find some Melissa for $5, $10. You know why? Because it's cut with synthetic or it's cut with lemon oil because the lemon balm has a scent. Unfortunately, then when I am working to um, use Melissa, let's say someone's got a shingles or a fever blister and I want Melissa because it's a phenomenal antiviral against the herpes virus. Um, and I don't get one that's pure, then I don't get the results for myself or clients. So purity is critical for me. We also are moving now into hospitals and doing bedside care with aromatherapy. And I have to move through these people called quality directors and purity of the essential oils is one of the things we talk about. So I need to make sure that any essential oil that I use comes from a company that does gas chromatography testing of every batch they bottle. And please know aromatherapy, vitamins, and supplements, as much as I love holistic health and I live holistic health, you really need to be aware that a lot of these products are unregulated, meaning no one's checking, no one's checking the bottles, no one is looking at advertising. So I could be a, an oil company uh, that has really low ethics and I could put in my literature, I do gas chromatography testing, and that doesn't happen. It's just print on material. It really doesn't happen. There are three companies, and I'm going to give you the name of all three because I'm here as an educator right now. The three companies that I get uh, notarized statements from uh, that says from either their corporate president or attorney that they do gas chromatography for purity. Um, one is called Tisserand, Robert Tisserand. Usually easily found in the Midwest. Another one is original Swiss aromatics. And another one that I use, and primarily I use it because they work on keeping their, their costs down. They're a small company. Um, Fairfield, Iowa is Amrita, A-M-R-I-D-A. And I'm so appreciative to Dorothy Lane Market for carrying the Amrita oils. Uh, when I, I'm out doing lectures, then I can refer people to DLM to, to get the oils. I just did a, a the, Two nights ago, I did a lecture for um, social workers and nurses, and I already received several emails that said, I ran to DLM and I got the oils. So, so we're going to talk about some different pieces. So the first, number one, gas chromatography. Please make sure you're dealing with a pure essential oil and not a synthetic. Uh, the second one is, and again, this is a quick lecture for me, so thank God I talk fast, is the concept of Latin binomials. And I don't expect you to learn these or remember these, but it's springtime. If you've purchased any plants or you're getting ready to, remember that little white stick and it'll have petunia and then it'll have a Latin name. Realize plants, those Latin names are critical to botanists and to aromatherapists. So for example, um, there's a eucalyptus globulus that is wonderful for the respiratory system, but it's not safe for children. And it's not safe for frail older adults. You wouldn't use it with someone that's pregnant, but there's another one called eucalyptus radiata that's excellent for the respiratory system. And it is child safe. And then there's one called eucalyptus citriodora. And when you go to DLM and you look at the Amrita oils, you're going to see all three eucalypti on, the, on their rack, on the Amrita rack. Eucalyptus citriodora is okay for respiratory, but it's phenomenal for muscle massage. It actually relaxes muscle fibers. And so when you purchase, when you're researching, you'll want to be sure that you purchase by the Latin binomial, that you're not just buying a bottle of eucalyptus. A lot of companies just want to mix it all up, all the eucalyptus, again, for profit margins. And a lot of people don't realize that I, one, of my, one of my big pieces in every class I teach is just because it's natural doesn't mean it's safe. And so, you know, it's, it's critically important that you use these oils with some judgment, with some knowledge. Um, you don't have to become a clinical aromatherapist to do this. Uh, you just have to have a little bit of knowledge behind your belt. They are not perfumes. Uh, they, are, they are naturally occurring chemicals that are phenomenal for healing. That eucalyptus that I mentioned, phenomenal antiviral and antibacterial. You know, and so when I'm diffusing it around the house, it's helped killing any germs that may be in, in my office, my house, any place that I happen to be. So I wanted to mention the Latin binomials. And if you need more information on this, um, contact me. It's the Institute of Holistic Leadership. Um, and we can, we can get you more information on this, this information. So 
The next one is I want to do a couple safety things. That's the RN in me. That's the, the really neurotic registered nurse. Please, 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 please do not use essential oils orally. We are, um, there are some places out there, some people that will tell you to use them orally. Please do not, unless this happens to be a physician and you're doing it short term, one drop of essential oil can be equal to 70 to 80 capsules of the dried herb in some of the chemical constituents. These are extremely potent. You also need to know that when you put something on your skin within 30 to 40 seconds, it's in your bloodstream. And so it is also critical that you dilute correctly. And I'm going to be uh, sharing this information with you as we move through this, how to dilute it. I have received several calls from hospitals, from ER docs. Unfortunately, physicians do not know aromatherapy and, and they can't. They know so many, they have to learn so many medications and, and medical treatments. Um, and so I have, I can list on my hand four, at least four or five times in the past year that I have been contacted by people, um, ER docs. I got a call from a couple of ER docs where the patients were in ER, uh, liver enzymes were elevated. Um, one was a licensed massage therapist who was uh, having tremors because she was using the oils full strength on people's backs uh, because she had been taught this by a company. Um, you know, the, and the problem is there can be this symptomology, these liver enzymes elevated, and there can be someone using oils and no one makes the connection. Someone drinking, you know, 10 drops of lemon oil in their water because it's good for them. Um, because people say, well, you can drink lemon in water. Yes, a slice. But if you put 10 drops of lemon oil, you're roughly putting the contents of 70 to 80 lemons peels in that in some of the chemical constituents in that water glass. So I just want you to have some precautions with that. I want you to use this safely. Again, just because it's natural doesn't mean it's safe. And 90 to 95% of my personal healing comes from aromatherapy. So I, I don't want you to leave this lecture saying, oh, she said it's dangerous. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying use it with some precautions, some common sense. And um, I know Dorothy Lane Market has some wonderful flyers uh, from Amrita that can tell you about, if you go in there, I'm sure they, they have them there, uh, that can tell you about how to use the essential oils and how to use them safely. Application. So I said, no, not orally and not directly on the skin. So how do you, with the exception of lavender, lavender is the only oil you can use directly on the skin. It is safe for everyone. How do you use them? You get three tablespoons of any kitchen carrier oil. It can be olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, three tablespoons and three to four drops of essential oil. And just put the oil, your carrier, your vegetable oil in a cup, put three to four drops of your essential oil, mix that up and then apply it if you want to apply it. But inhalation, smelling is one of the most powerful ways to use the essential oil, especially in the things that we're going to talk about today um, and the different blends that they have. And it's one of the things I love about Amrita. Dr. Stryker, who owns the company, has put together some real synergistic blends called Synergies, that you can use where he has mixed some of the oils together for you to diffuse. And I'm going to show you about diffusing in just a moment. Well, I'm actually going to do that right now. Uh, a couple pieces. Number one, never diffuse with heat. Heat destroys the molecular, it affects the molecular quality of the essential oils, so therefore they're not as therapeutic. That's number one. Number two, never diffuse with water. Uh, it can cause bronchial irritation. I work with a pulmonologist and the pulmono pulmonologist was saying that there were, uh, he had many people who had uh, asthma or bronchitis. And when they use the ultrasonic water mist, that actually caused the irritation and they blame the oil and it wasn't the oil. You can get, you can, you can inhale the oil by a real tech method, bottle, open up and just inhale it. Or you can use a diffuser. And I know DLM carries these. These are absolutely amazing. Number one, they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, the top comes off and you can use it batteries. It comes with a cord that you can plug into your computer or plug into one of those jacks that you plug into your, uh, to an electrical outlet. Um, it comes with microfiber pads. You put about 10 drops of your oil on this microfiber pad and you turn the diffuser on, I'm showing you the bottom of it. You see the little fan begins to blow the mist throughout your environment. Uh, we say roughly uh, 10 minutes out of every half hour or 20 minutes out, out of every hour to diffuse. These are wonderful in offices. It's air, it's done by air, not water. It's room temperature. 
and it is one of the best, most eff um, effective ways to diffuse the oils. And there's a lot of versatility. I put it in my car, I put it in my office, I can move it around the house. Um, so that may be a way that you, something you wanna look at in order to diffuse. So let's talk about some oils for self-care. And, and the first one I'm gonna talk about, and I'm gonna touch on this just very briefly, is lavender. Lavender essential oil, I have a, I'm telling you a test question uh, on our, one of our certification, certification tests, and that is, if you were on a desert island and you could only have one essential oil with you because it's so good for everything, many things, and that would be lavender essential oil. Lavender essential oil is excellent because a lot of what's happened is people are not sleeping because of what we've been through and all the stress. Sleep is critical. They're actually calling not sleeping the new smoking. Um, we really should be getting eight to nine hours of sleep a night and utilizing the um, lavender, putting a couple drops on your pillow, diffusing, uh, have this at your bedside and kick it on for 10, 20 minutes before you go into that room or when you get in bed. Uh, hopefully you can quickly turn it off before you drift, drift into that sleep. Uh, utilizing lavender, it's good for anxiety. Um, I have a, a from PubMed.com, it's medical research, a double, uh, double blind evidence-based research on lavender for anxiety. So yes, simply inhaling. And people say, well, how can inhaling make that much of a difference? It can make a huge difference in inhaling um, because it enters your, your body and it actually affects brain chemistry. Some, everyone, some will say that's not possible. It is. I always use the analogy if someone walks into a room with poisonous gas and inhales it, what happens? Yes, it affects physiology. And so do the essential oils. Now, another essential oil I want to mention, and this is one of the synergies from Amrita, is headache reliever. How many of us have noticed an increase in pain and headaches? There is a blend called headache reliever that is absolutely amazing. It's from Amrita. Um, it is a blend of wintergreen, peppermint, and sweet lavender. It helps with the exhaustion from a headache. It helps with the um, uh, nausea that you sometimes get with a headache. It helps with the pain of a headache. And one other thing I want to mention, and again, I'm saying this because it's like, well, I want that. I want to know where to get it. Dorothy, and my lighting is not good with this, so I apologize, but Dorothy Lane has Amrita roll-ons, so it's already mixed. So I keep a bottle of headache reliever in my purse. Um, when I feel a little headache coming on, it's already mixed, so you can use it on the skin. I will rub it on my temples, maybe the back of my neck. It's absolutely amazing. And they have, they have uh, uh, stress to relax, uh, anti-anxiety, stress, uh, mental energizer, which is an amazing oil blend. They have it in the roll-on as well as in, in, in the essential oil that you can put it into the diffuser. Um, another blend that you might love, there's a wonderful one called Pure Joy. This is about self-care, this presentation today. And Pure Joy is an absolutely amazing blend of ylang ylang, bergamot, pink grapefruit, and lavender. It is an amazing blend, synergy that calms you down. So it's called Pure Joy that calms you down. At the same time, um, it, it wakes you up a little bit. So it's not like the lavender that's going to put you to sleep. It's going to be calming and yet uplifting. Um, it also has a little bit of aphrodisiac properties. So it uh, a lot of people will diffuse it or in the bedroom at night or, um, and it just, it smells absolutely wonderful. And has that, again, that relaxing and uplifting. And that's unusual to find in blends. They're either gonna put you to sleep or wake you up. So I really recommend the Pure Joy. So we've mentioned the lavender, the headache reliever and the pure joy. This time of, of year, uh, I actually was around a couple of nurses the other day and I saw them popping Claritin and I'm not against medications, but if you can use the natural first, you're gonna get better results. And, and then if it doesn't work, you can always use the medication. They have a wonderful oil called Allergy Easer. And for those of you who are having any kind of hay fever and it is absolutely amazing to either roll on underneath your nose, uh, inhale from the bottle. Allergy easer is amazing. Another oil that they have is mental energizer because with all the stress and anxiety, 
a lot of us have become exhausted. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be done in just a second, but I do want to let you know, I think this is interesting with all the Zooming now that we do, the average adult is working two more hours a day. We don't have that downtime. You know, I'm going right from this to teaching a class where if, if I didn't have Zoom, I would be driving to the classroom and I would have 15, 20 minutes of downtime. So we've lost a lot of that in the car downtime and we are working an average of two more hours a day. We're tired, we're exhausted. And there's another wonderful blend called Mental Energizer that is amazing. My husband will be without it to help you wake up when you've got that brain fog, when you've got those afternoon slumps. It's lemon, lime, peppermint, and ginger. And so again, it comes in the roll on and it comes in the bottle of essential oil that you can put into your diffuser. Now, I wanted to hit, we are almost out of time. I have wanted to hit some of the ones that can make a big difference with you. Um, does anyone have any questions at this time? And I know DLM, the people that are running this are, are um, looking to see if there's any questions. And I will wait a second to either hear from Joy or see something pop up in the chat. Thank you so much, Patty. You're always so, you have so much good, a wealth of information. And we do have a couple questions here. Okay. So, um, Sandra on Facebook uh, said, those diffusers have a very bright light that does not work well in bedrooms. Is there a way to turn them off? You can't turn the light off, put a piece of duct tape over it. <laughs> I, I have a go. friend who's very sensitive to light and she just has a little piece of duct tape that she covers it up, doesn't turn it off with it and it blocks it. So good question. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. We had another question. Are there oils that should not be diffused around pets? For instance, cats? Yes. If yes, because I have three cats, you may see them running around here. Uh, yes. Any oil that is not child safe should not be used around pets. Um, you think of how small they are. And I will tell you, cats are very sensitive. Uh, when I open up my lavender bottle, my cats take off. So we don't wreck as my vet, I have a holistic vet. And as he says, cats are a weird, they're wired weirdly. So I don't use any essential oils with my cats. And even for dogs, I always say a big dog. If you've got a dog that weighs 60 to hundred pounds, you might be able to use a little lavender, but really do it with caution. They are just, they're, di they're built different than us. Okay. And if someone wanted to learn more about essential oils, do you have any classes at the Institute? <gasps> Well, now that you've asked, <laughs> yes, we do a variety of classes. We do, we have a series called Pathways um, to Health, and that's the second and fourth Thursday of every month. Uh, we're doing a lot of them virtually. We are going to start meeting back a little bit, and we do the social distancing and masks and all of that. Um, so we have an aromatherapy medicine chest product class. Uh, it goes on and on and on because aromatherapy really is one of my favorite modalities. And then we have a full clinical certification. Um, and I just have to say, I'm so excited. I've been doing this for 40 years for this reason. Our graduates are now going into a local hospital. We will be starting in June doing bedside care with aromatherapy. Um, and it's taken only five years to make this happen. Uh, it's taken 40, but we've been working on this project five years. So we will be announcing that once it once it starts, it will be starting June 8th. And so uh, thank God I'm stubborn. <laughs> because That's it's great. Anyway, so we're very good. excited. So yes, contact us at ihlead.com is our website. Or um, and, and again, just look up Holistic Schools in the Dayton area. Okay. And they're virtual. So if you're watching this from California, we've got some classes for you too. All right. Um, and then someone asked, um, should we not use diffusers even with water to emit aromas? I'm not, I'm not reading my person's writing here. <laughs> um, I to don't emit nice aromas. Should we not use even with water? No, I, I don't. I, I don't recommend that. Uh, we don't do it in hospitals. It, those ultras, that ultrasonic mist combined with the oils can cause a bronchial irritation. Mm -hmm. And when you have that bronchial irritation, then you start coughing. I have a grandson with asthma. I do not. Use, I don't have the water diffusers. And again, I learned that from a pulmonologist uh, that I worked with here in Dayton. And he's like, get rid of those water diffusers and just use air temp room air. And that's the little ones. I think you carry these aroma fires. They simply have a fan in them. So it just blows it out. Great. 
Okay. Um, can you repeat the sinus recommendations? The sinus recommendations. Well, if it's if it is um, allergies, I recommend the blend, the synergy called Allergy Easer. Uh, Allergy Easer is absolutely amazing. We could not when we had a we'd had a little bookstore in our school. Um, we couldn't keep it on the shelf because people this time of year with the eyes watering. And the note, it's amazing. If you have headaches from allergies, then you use the headache reliever. And one of the best things, if you are a live in Sinus Valley instead of Miami Valley, <laughs> is get the eucalyptus, either the eucalyptus radiata, uh, if you have kids around or you're pregnant, or the eucalyptus globulus, if you're an adult without any, any of those, those issues. And in the morning when you take a shower, because now this is not ultrasonic, cool, about four or five drops and that's it in like the, the, the tub or the shower stall toward the back so it doesn't get washed down the drain. And that, that warm mist will pick up the essential oils. You'll be amazed how clear. Or what I do a lot, if I don't have time to do that, I just diffuse. I diffuse the eucalyptus. It's amazing. Now, remember, you will have more drainage initially because it breaks down the mucus. But then you'll be able to breathe deeper than you have breathed in a long time. Great. Okay, well, um, one little side note, Aunt Rita is on sale this month at Dorothy Lane Market, so it's a good chance to uh, try some of the things that Patty has recommended. Thank you so much, Patty. We really appreciated you coming on. It was, it was great, as you always are. Well, thank you for inviting me. I love it. So thank uh -huh. you so much. Uh-huh.